Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the ultimate way to analyze Lockhart scales using linear regression, be it simple linear regression, multiple linear regression, or even hierarchical linear regression. So before proceeding, I would like to show you the questionnaire. This is a Lockhart scale that ranges from strongly agree to strongly disagree because this item is reverse coded. Uh, there are some items that are coded like we have strongly disagree to strongly agree uh, before uh, computing the overall mean score so that we can reduce the different uh, uh, for example uh, items into one dimension we need to compute the reliability the Cronbach's alpha reliability we need to compute the overall mean score by transform compute variable and mean score and then we need to test some assumptions like linearity uh, collinearity uh, normality outliers among others before running the test and we want to make sure that the variables are on a continuous scale uh, be the interval or ratio rather than categorical variables like gender uh, or other variables so here we go to uh, let's say to this test to predict the extent to which for example uh, the brand loyalty uh, has a positive or negative impact on the purchase intention using simple linear uh, regression. Multiple linear regression when we have just two independent variables like brand loyalty and self congruity on the predictor or the or rather outcome variable which is purchase intention. This is called multiple linear regression. So without further ado, let's get started. To run the linear regression, we go to analyze and then we go to regression okay and then linear so i need just to uh, put the variable of brand for instance loyalty or purchase intention to the dependent list and the other variable like brand loyalty and self congruity to to the this list or the independent list variable for statistics i need to go and check the model fit the r squared change for instance the estimates etc in case we have time series we can go for darwin watson test in case i want to run correlation i can run it from here by running uh, part and partial correlations and running descriptive stats like the mean and standard deviation etc and then checking the assumption of collinearity by the vif value or the tolerance value okay then click continue and then let's go to uh, options so we keep it as it is. This has to do with missing value treatments, be the exclude, case, exclude cases list wise, pair wise, or replace with mean. So I can just uh, choose this one, the first one. So list wise exclusion. Uh, this means that it will exclude all items, uh, will remove all the columns in case there are missing values or rows. So, anyways, let's go to style. We keep it as it is. We go to options. I said and then we go to save for save we can choose what to include like i need to check uh, outliers by the cook's distance or the cook's test so i need to check it like this and click or continue in case i want to have some plots like histograms etc i need to check plots and move the z predictor to the x or axis that is this is the predictor variable because the independent variable is called the predictor and the uh, y variable or the dependent variable is called the z residual okay and i choose histogram and normality probability plot click continue click ok and wait for the output so here is the output you can see here the mean score of the brand loyalty self congruity uh, on on purchase intention so the higher the mean score the more respondents agree standard deviation means how each respondent differs from the other and the n refers to the sample size then for the correlations, we need to have low correlation coefficients so that we don't have multicollinearity. So anything that is greater than seven is bad. Like here we have brand loyalty with purchase intention. So they are highly correlated. So this means that the, 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 there is somehow multicollinearity, but still we can tolerate this because it's not that extreme. Then for the uh, variables entered and removed here, we have the method that is called enter. and then for the some uh, for some assumptions we have the r this means the correlation coefficient which is statistically significant positive correlation as we can see 
it's 76 percent then we have the r square which means that there is 58 percent of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variables and then we have the if change and we have the p-value that is below 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 which means that this is statistically significant okay for the ANOVA here it tells us the whether the extent to which for instance the model fits the data so it has to do with goodness of fit and it is statistically significant that's what we want to have so it should be statistically significant and then for the coefficients we look at the standardized coefficients we find that if we add uh, those two values up we have 40 plus 30 this means uh, we have almost 80% uh, of the variance uh, in the dependent variable of uh, purchase intention is explained by brand loyalty and self congruity okay for the zero order partial correlations etc so you can see their values so this is just correlation for the VIF it should be between uh, it should be one less than one here it's a little bit high so this means that it's a little bit moderate multicollinearity the tolerance here uh, should be below five which means that it's good for the cook's distance test where is it uh, here so it seems that it's good so it's below one uh, or 0 point, uh, point 0.1 so this is good so there are no outliers and then we can see the residuals etc so this is like the the bill curve shape of the histogram this means that there is this normality the data and you see the dots and the diagonal are to some extent uh, close to each other which means that there is this linearity so to speak therefore we can uh, interpret this uh, this output by saying that uh, multiple linear regression shows a positive impact of the brand loyalty and safe congruity that is the independent variables or the predictors on the outcome variable accounting for uh, for instance, and I can state the change or the, the level of the change that is here, 58% uh, of the change. And uh, they both account for and can cite the beta coefficients that is here more than uh, 40 plus uh, 60, 70, 80% of the uh, positive impact, you see. And you can even state the, the positive impact of each uh, one separately to see that self congruity is higher or is different from the brand loyalty in terms of accounting for purchase intention. So this is in brief how you can run a multiple linear regression and interpret the output or even simple linear regression depending on the number of variables using uh, SPSS. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below or contact me via one of my social media and see you soon in another tutorial. Bye for now.